Good morning, Seagull Church. It's Daniel here. If we haven't met before, hello to you. It's my privilege today to be able to share some thoughts with you today on the Word of God, that we would be able to learn and be encouraged and walk away transformed together. You know, we are living in some interesting times here in Melbourne, to say the least. And with lockdown, I've noticed it's really, really easy to just wish each day away, waiting for things to return to normal, or get caught up in a pattern of just getting through each day and grinding, or getting caught up in the day-to-day -day just context of my own sphere, my own immediate family, my own world, and forgetting about people on the outside. And sometimes, for some people, this can even lead to spiritual apathy. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to just survive through this time. I want to be able to thrive. I want to be spiritually fruitful. I don't want to waste a day when God can be working in and through my life. I want to live in such a way that I grow in character and maturity, that people come to know Jesus through me, that people get to experience God's love and they feel encouraged and blessed by interacting with me. And I ultimately, I just want my life to have spiritual impact. To put it simply, I want to be fruitful. We're going to see what Jesus has to say today about fruitfulness. But before we begin, would you just join me as we commit this time to God? Join me in prayer. Father, we just thank you so much for your presence right here, right now, in different homes and different people's lives. Lord, would you just help us in this time to be able to hear your voice, to understand the truth of your word, and to be open to being transformed by your spirit. Lord, we need you and we just, we just submit our lives to you right now and say, come Holy Spirit. Would you speak to us this morning? We thank you for this time in your name. Amen. See, fruitfulness is more than just a good idea or a Christianese term. In fact, Jesus even told his disciples that they were chosen and appointed that they would go and bear fruit that lasts. In John chapter 15, verse 16, Jesus says this, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you might go and bear fruit fruit that will last and so that whatever you ask in my name the father will give you let's begin here you and i have the same calling as the disciples of jesus no matter what season no matter what challenge no matter what opposition no matter what limitation god is calling you and i to live fruitful lives and maybe you're a bit like me you're kind of scratching your head with the recent lockdown wondering hey how can i be fruitful? How can I be um, effective for God? How can I experience fruitfulness in this season when I feel so limited? Well, we're going to look at John chapter 15 today, verses 1 to 17, and we're going to ask ourselves the question, how can I live a fruitful life? Now, this is a really big bunch of scripture. We're not going to go through all of it today, and we're going to narrow our scope to that of looking at fruitfulness. And we're going to learn what Jesus actually says, because he gives us two really important keys that will go and change how we live each day. At the beginning of John 15, Jesus sets up a metaphor of a vineyard and he says, I'm the true vine and his father, God, is the gardener. And speaking to his disciples, he says this in verse four, remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. You know, Jesus begins by painting a picture of branches being connected to the vine and tells his disciples to remain in him. And this word remain is repeated time and time again. In some translations, they use the word abide. I want to draw our attention to verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. The question I posed at the start was, how do we live fruitful lives? Well, first and foremost, we need to remain in Christ. And the call to remain suggests an element of choice. We need to choose to have fellowship with Jesus. We need to, be we need to choose each day to be connected to him as the branch is connected to 
divine. See, fruitfulness is not dependent upon our external circumstances. It's not dependent on what's going on around us. It's dependent on who we're connected to, the vine, who is Jesus. Side note, what's interesting in verse 7 is that Jesus even says this, If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. See, as we remain in Christ in fellowship with him, our hearts and our desires align with what he has for us, with his hearts, his heart and his desires for us. And as we pray, he actually answers our prayer. You know, as Christians, we can't escape the reality that we need to have ongoing fellowship with Jesus. We need to talk with him and walk with him in our every day. And we all have different ways of fellowshipping with God. Maybe you're that person that gets up at 5 a.m. in the morning to meditate, pray, read the word and spend an hour with God. Or maybe you're that person that has to go out during the afternoon and go for a walk and just listen to an audio book of the, of the Bible. Regardless of the method, I think we can all agree that God calls us to be in continual fellowship and dialogue with him. We need to spend time with him. But often in our culture, we're caught up being hurried and busy, juggling all that life throws at us, work, relationships, family, looking at cults and internet forums to find out rumors of who the next coach will be. No matter what it is, it's so easy to get caught up with busyness. And it's our busyness and our hurry that means that fellowship can really take a back seat. John Mark Comer, a pastor from a church called Bridgetown Church in Portland, and author of The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry says this, not only does hurry keep us from the love, joy, and peace of the kingdom of God, the very core of what all human beings crave, but it also keeps us from God himself simply by stealing our attention. And with hurry, we always lose more than we gain. Maybe that resonates with you. It can be so difficult at times to set aside time for fellowship with God because of our busyness. But often I think we can confuse busyness with fruitfulness. We can have full calendars. We can be doing a myriad of things each and every day. But if we're too busy to be connected to the vine, we're not going to be fruitful. We're not going to bear fruit. Jesus used a, a more blunt expression. He said, apart from me, you can do nothing. How do we live fruitful lives? Well, the first point is this. We need to remain in him by having ongoing fellowship with Jesus. Now, if we were to put a full stop here, it would mean that we can make our faith all about ourselves, just me and the Lord, kind of like a mug almost. But remaining in Christ, being in fellowship with him, is just the beginning of living a fruitful life. Let's continue reading from verse nine. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love just as I've kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I've told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. Jesus this time tells his disciples to remain in my love. He says, if you keep my commands, you'll remain in my love or fellowship. Well, it leads to the natural question, what are his commands? And verse 10 tells us this, to love each other as he has loved us. And out of the outflow of that, out of the outflow of having fellowship with him, comes loving others. See, if our faith is purely individualistic, purely just about me, just about me and God, I've missed the point. If our faith is just about our time with him, we've missed such a greater aspect to what God is calling us to do. See, true Christian faith compels us to love people and have an others orientation. And you might be thinking right now, Daniel, I am locked away in a house in a 5K radius. I'm completely landlocked. What could I be doing? Honestly, at this time, loving people may be messaging them saying, how are you going? Offering to pray for them, maybe even sending them some Uber Eats or Del Deliveroo or something if you're extra generous. Or just picking up the phone and saying, g'day. There are so many ways that we can love people and start having an others orientation. To live a fruitful life, we need to firstly remain in Christ, have fellowship with him, and secondly, keep his commands by loving others as he has loved us. Jesus goes on further to explain what happens when we do these two things. Let's look back at verse 10 
and 11 from the New Living Translation. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love, just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. When we remain in him and we have fellowship with him and love others, we experience overflowing joy. In a season where it's so easy to become so self-absorbed with what we're missing out on or just being consumed by our own worlds as we live in our own lockdown bubbles, I just want to encourage you to take heed of the words of Jesus. Remaining in him and having fellowship with him and loving others will lead to great joy. We need to take an others orientation. Simply put, we need to get over ourselves sometimes and start thinking about who is outside of our own four walls. One thing I found to be true in my life is that those people who love Jesus and spend time with him, have fellowship with him, and are really focused on, on, on blessing others and loving others are often people who carry a great joy. I was reflecting on writing this message about a couple of months ago, I was at a, a workshop for an all day Saturday Safe Churches workshop, very um, focused on like governance and looking at how we can make churches safe spaces. And there was a volunteer there from another church and he was an elderly gentleman, probably in his seventies. And he actually goes to a church in Caulfield, but his home is in Noble Park. And he travels back and forth between the church and his home, serves in different capacities. And one of the things he does is he's a connect group leader. And I was expressing how it's amazing that he's still involved at his age and he's traveling back and forth. And he looked at me and he said, it is a joy to serve the Lord. And I've just never shaken that moment. As someone who truly loves Jesus and is in fellowship with him, who's actually thinking about how he can serve and love others, is actually carrying an overflowing joy that comes from being connected to the vine. You know, our faith needs to go just so much further than just believing in Jesus. We need to move from just belief to ongoing fellowship and communion and union with Jesus each and every day walking with him through all our moments and then taking it even that next step further and loving others in that process. Out of the overflow of that relationship comes an other's orientation and we'll actually experience joy. We need to love others as he has loved us. Jesus goes on to say what happens when we do that, when we do so. We, we touched on this verse earlier, but I'll just draw our attention back to verse eight. Jesus says, this is to my father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. At the end of the day, living a fruitful life is for the glory of God the Father. It's more than just a good idea. It's more than just Christianese speak. It brings God glory and honor and praise. And it shows us to be his disciples. It's a pursuit that's so worth our time and our energy. You know, to summarize this morning, as disciples of Jesus, we're called to live fruitful lives. And we do so by remaining in fellowship with him, with ongoing union and relationship with him. And we keep his commands by loving others as he has loved us. When we do so, we experience an overflowing joy from the Lord and we give glory to him in the process. No matter the season we face right now, no matter how difficult life may be, no matter the circumstance you find yourselves in, no matter the limitation we may feel, we need to remain in Him and love others. We are not bound to not do these things. We are not limited in our ability to do these things in this moment. Let's thrive through this season and not just survive. Let's not wait for the time to be over or wish each day away. But let's be so focused on living a fruitful, God-glorifying life that the world will know Jesus through us. There is a world that is crying out to know his love, crying out to know what Jesus has done for them. And it's our privilege, responsibility, calling to heed the words of Jesus and love them like he has loved us. I want to close today in some prayer. Maybe you're hearing this message and you're thinking, man, I need to be connected to the vine. Or I need to really start having fellowship with him more and more. Or maybe you're thinking, I actually want to start loving others and having an others orientation. If that's you, will you just join me in prayer? Wherever you are, just bow your head and close your eyes as I pray for us today. 
Father God, we just thank you so much that you have chosen us and appointed us to be people who bear fruit, who give you glory as your disciples as we follow you each and every day. Lord, would you help us to be connected to the vine? Would you help us to be in fellowship with you? Each and every day as we, we come across life's busyness, um, distractions, responsibilities, God, would you help us to put fellowship with you first? God, we, we just acknowledge our need for you and we thank you that your Holy Spirit helps us to do these things. Lord, as well, would you help us to, to love others as you have loved us? Would you help us to have an others orientation, God, that we would be people who just love people as you love them. Lord, enlarge our hearts today that we would see people how you see them and want to just bless them and love them and be people that actually um, represent you well as your ambassadors, God, that people would see the fruit that comes from our lives and they would know we're your disciples and they would know that you are real and alive, Father. We just thank you so much for your presence in our lives, God, and we thank you that you're with us each and every day, helping us to walk out our faith in your name. Amen. Bless you, church.